Hello and welcome back to Warsword Conquest and our wonderful adventures with Slythe. And uh, I just want to show you my party real fast. Obviously we've got the Rat Ogre still and we still have the, the two Minotaurs that we rescued in the previous episode. Now here's what's really, really cool. And I want to show you this because this is another feature that I personally feel is extremely important in a mod like this. Where there are just so many different troops. And it's so incredibly important. It really, really is. Anyway, I do have a bunch of gunners. Hopefully, we're going to be able to level those up into Poisoned Wind Globideers. I did just go into a relatively large battle, actually. But it was only against bandits. Uh, it was against, like, a, a goblin army or something like that. They only had around 40 to 50 troops. So it wasn't that dangerous. We did end up losing uh, quite a lot of our clan rats, but these guys are literally tier two, basically. So, you know, just bear that in mind. But what I actually wanted to show you is this. Now, we've got a potential fight on our hands here, if we want to do it. But what I wanted to bring to your attention, and this is another thing that I got uh, quite a few comments about. Now, here's the thing. I One thing, bottom line here, okay? One thing about this, I'm not going to talk about this for more than a minute or so. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, just wait, wait, wait. All right, I'm going to hold myself to that, all right? Anyway, basically, the battle that we had against the caravan in the previous episode, I just wanted to try to show you just exactly the reason, or sh shall we say, show the people that thought we could win it, okay? So this was basically the kind of caravan that we were going to fight. You see those paladins and those grail knights and the knights of the realm and the questing knights and so on and so forth. There are two paladins there, four grail knights, four questing knights, okay? Six knights of the realm and then a number of assorted other knight type units. Okay, so keep that in mind, all right? Keep, that, keep those names in mind because we are going to go and take a look at the reference material. This is actually something that I wanted to show you. It is amazing. The amount of work that has gone into this mod is just jaw-dropping. Absolutely jaw-dropping. You can look at all, every single lord. You can look at every single merc. You can look at all items. All items. You can actually see every single item in the game if you want to. Which is amazing. But we are not interested in that at the moment. We are interested in viewing every single troop available. So what we're going to do, as, as you can see, we have every single troop available here. And I'm going to go all the way to Britannia. Because obviously that's what we're interested in at the moment. So you remember those names, don't you? I hope you do. So we've got the Britannia Knight Errand here. There's a bunch of those in the, um, in the party. You can see here, this is a Britannian Grail Knight. Which levels up from a Knight Errand. They had four of these. Okay, they had four of these. They have Ward 6, Regenerate, and Unbreakable. They have 350 weapon proficiencies across the board, basically. And they also have a significant amount of HP with 71. There's four of these. Okay, four of these. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Okay, we're up against four of those. We're up against four of these, which, again, are really, really strong. 260 proficiency units, 65 HP that guy has. And then we also have seven of these, or around six or seven of these. So we have about a total of, including the other knight type units that we are no doubt going to be uh, seeing around about. Yeah, yeah, the yeoman here, that's also a knight type unit technically. I mean, it doesn't level up into a knight, but it's still a cavalry unit. And so every single one of these guys being on a horse Especially considering the Grail Knights are absolutely insane. And don't get me started on the Paladins. Look at the Paladins. There are two of these. And, okay, now this is the highest tier that you are going to see. So anyone, no, no offense now, right? Anyone saying that the, you know, losing against a caravan or whatever, or going in against the caravan and ending up suffering a defeat... I, I'm not sure whether, I don't know whether you know about the actual power that some of these units have in Warsword Conquest. Because that's the thing. I may be someone that has a lot of experience in Warband, but that doesn't mean that I can actually defeat something like this. Or, if we take a look at the actual Paladin here, I don't think I can actually take this on 
when there are so many of these guys. They have insanely good horses as well, by the way. But yeah, I don't think I can take these guys on with a huge smattering of these in comparison. Because that's basically what I had. I had a bunch of clan rats, I had a bunch of gunners, and that's pretty much it with the random assortment of companions I had at the time. So I basically just wanted to bring that to your attention because um, someone said, what's happened to me? I used to be really good at the game and so on and so forth. I never claimed that, by the way. I never claimed to actually be good at the game. And that is not my goal. That is, that is not my <laughs> overarching goal. My goal is to have fun. My goal is to have fun, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I love this mod. This mod is probably one of my favorites. If not, I'm not sure if it is my favorite. I think it is. I think it is. It's getting there. It's getting there if it isn't already. I'm really, really enjoying it. I'd love to actually be able to complete this dungeon. Shall we try to speed run the dungeon? Shall we try? <laughs> Shall we try to speed run the dungeon? Maybe we should. All right. So now here's the problem here. I don't actually want to take the Rat Ogres in with me, because if I take the Rat Ogres and the Minotaurs in with me, this is going to be a huge, huge problem. We're not going to have... Um, <laughs> it's going to be a bit difficult, isn't it? I, I, I guess I might take Skeezel in. I, I guess we, we should probably take Skeezel, and that, that's basically it. What else do we have here? Uh, dungeon Modifier is currently on two. I'm going to increase it to three, and we're going to make the Enemy Selection Classic random again. All right, let's do this. All right, I'm actually damaged, so I might need to heal myself. Oh, hello there, sir. Oh, you, oh you're a goblin. Oh, you're a goblin. Oh, this is going to be uh, relatively simple if I can actually just hit. Thank you very much. Oh, this is a nice... Look, this is exactly what I'm talking about. The amount of work that just goes into this mod is absolutely insane because you can literally get into situations like this where I'm now in this weird tower-type situation. And, I mean, you could see exactly the reason why I think this is amazing because... This is fundamentally different from pretty much anything else we've seen so far, and I am just blown away by that, you know? It's just amazing, it really is. Ow, okay, yeah, I'm actually going to take a healing potion right here. I need to find another potion seller, to be honest. I'd like to try and buy as many potions as I can get my hands on. That would really make a huge difference. There we go. Oh uh, yeah, so also, <laughs> apart from the fact that obviously chests are extremely, extremely difficult to come across sometimes, um, they, they do tend to hide them quite, quite dramatically. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the point. If I can come across them and if they're like right in my line of sight, then I'm obviously gonna, you know, I'm obviously gonna do that. And uh, obviously, you know, that's the thing. That's another thing. Maybe I should actually tell my forces to follow me. That's the thing. Someone said, uh, someone said, why don't you tell your forces to follow you? And yeah, that's actually a really good point. I, I probably should tell them to follow me. However, I don't actually want to go all the way down there, sir. So um, yeah, we're actually just going to leave. I'm just going to tell him to follow me right now. Oh, he just killed himself. <laughs> he just, <laughs> he just fell. He fell and died. He fell off the the edge he fell off the edge i can't believe that actually he fell off the edge and that is it oh yeah someone actually also had another question um basically when it comes to um potions right when it comes to potions because you were asking about whether potions last so for example if you take a potion on the first level of a dungeon and then you zone in to the next level is the potion still active i think that that's what your question was from my perspective I'm going to say, because uh, I have obviously haven't really used the potions that much, but I'm going to assume, because of the wording on the description of the potion, it basically says um, the potion lasts for the duration of the battle, quote-unquote, as far as I'm aware, or uh, something along those lines. So basically what that means, to me at least, is that it will last as long as a dungeon level, because that's when you zone into the next stage. So if you do take one... Uh, I, I'd probably recommend taking the potion on one of the later levels because that's really going to be the thing that will, will make you... Um, you'll, you'll probably have issues later on down the line. I was actually so incredibly taken unawares by this flamer of Zinch that I, um, <laughs> I took damage. So that's great because I was very much hoping that... Um, well, I actually got a bit shocked by that guy. Although he wasn't using lightning or anything like that. It would have been a wonderful pun if I could have said that. Anyway, 
Okay, oh, now we've got undead. Look at how cool this is. This is amazing. I absolutely love this. And obviously, we're basically just going to be trying for the um, the end of dungeon loot. That's what I'm really, really wanting to go for here. Because it seems like that has actually proved to be um, much greater in value than pretty much anything else so far that we found from the chests. Even though the chests actually do, they do provide us with some pretty nice stuff sometimes. But for me personally, considering I do have some pretty nice, um, pretty nice money situation going on right now, I uh, I do have some enterprises and so on, and that's really making a huge difference to our overall um, overall profits that we're making every single week. Uh, I, I last at last count at least, I'm making thirty six hundred in profit, and that's pretty good in my opinion. So me needing cash, I mean that's really a thing that was happening very early on you can see here that it is so incredibly random it is so random what kind of loot you get in these um in these chests but there you go anyway let's move on okay what do we have here i might need to take a healing potion i've still got three so i'm pretty happy with that to be honest okay let's uh oh yeah these guys have got ignore pain i need to get ignore pain okay i'm gonna get ignore pain after this i'm gonna get ignore pain and hopefully we'll be um will be much more difficult to kill. That's what that's what I want. I want to be having that. I actually wonder, is there more than just that? Is there actually something more that I can get? Because I know that there's Mighty Blow, and I know that there is... Is this the, is this the exit? No. I know there's Mighty Blow, and I know that there's Ignore Pain. Um, and I, I seem to recall, is that is that another mod that I'm thinking of? Or is, is that a mod? Is, is that actually part of this mod? Because I seem to recall there was something to do with dodge, but I think I'm thinking of a different mod at this point. Um, so I'm actually not entirely sure. Oh, we're sneaking. We are sneaking and squeaking. Oh yes, we are. Oh no, don't get killed by these things. Uh, no, no, don't, 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 no, no, no. Oh wow. Okay, that was a headshot and a half. Look at that. 33 damage. I was really, really hoping I'd be able to avoid that. Now. <laughs> If, you, if you're going to say to me, I've forgotten the basics of Warband, I, I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about right there, because I don't actually have a shield, right? I don't have a shield, and the basics of Warband getting headshot, well, that's just how it goes. That's how it goes for me. That, that is how it goes for me sometimes. Anyway, we still got 65. We got actually some level ups from this for some reason. Not sure how we got level ups from that, but we did actually start at a lower level in HP than I would have liked, to be honest. So that's kind of a shame, isn't it? But... Oh well, never mind. Okay, so I'm actually thinking to myself right now, what do we actually want to spec into here? Because I'm thinking to myself right now, what do we want to go for? What do we want to go for? I don't know. That's the, that's the question, because we could go for an insane strength-based build, or we could go for some more agility, but I'm actually not entirely sure what agility is going to do for us anymore. Because we do have that 7 in Weapon Master, which saves me 3 additional attribute points. If I hadn't gotten that random event that gave me that Weapon Master skill, then I would probably already have Agility 21. So I'm, I'm going to go for some more strength here, because I personally feel like going for... Um, maybe some more looting skill would actually help us. I'm thinking maybe some more looting. Let's go for some throwing weapons as well. And yeah, I, I guess that's going to be good enough. And then we're just going to fight uh, maybe a large bandit party or something like that. Large goblin bandits would be quite nice. And I wouldn't mind actually going over to Putrid Stump. Yes, Putrid Stump is the town. Ah, th there's the pirate press gang. Okay, there we go. Yes, I will go into a battle against these fellows. Thank you. All right, here we go. So 62 versus 55. All right, so everyone remember your basics. Okay, remember to click install on Mountain Blade Warband and then click play. And then we will create a new character. And <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyway, no, no, we're, we're fine. We're fine. All we got to do is we just got to go into the nice ranks. We're going to be absolutely fine here. But the main problem we're going to we're going to see with these guys is that they have ranged, right? So what I'm going to try is I'm going to put my ranged troops in a position where they can immediately try to fire against the opponent as soon as they come over the hill like this. Like, like, like they are doing right now. Look at that. There we go. We've got some in initial volleys coming in right there. And then hopefully my own forces will be able to... Uh, my own infantry, at, at least, will be able to do some damage to the enemy's infantry. And then we will win. And then everyone will be happy. And it's going to be nice. But, uh, yes, as I said to you beforehand, and as my 
my mindset, <laughs> this is actually quite funny actually, to, be, to be honest, my mindset whenever it comes to Warband or in general games is if I am enjoying it or if it is an enjoyable, entertaining experience, even if I'm not enjoying it, <laughs> even if I'm not enjoying it, it is still, it is still entertainment that I am caring about the most. Entertainment for you or entertainment for myself doesn't really matter either way. As long as it is, it is an enjoyable experience and that is it. That is all I care about because from from my perspective, I, I, I don't know about you, but I personally would find it quite boring if I was just stomping absolutely every single fight. Because sure, that's exactly what we want to see. We want to see us achieve victory. However, in the grand scheme of things, I would much prefer to have a situation where we, you know, suffer a, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of a difficulty here and there. Because if, if not, then it's way too easy. You know, if not, it's way too easy. And then we're just like, well, okay, I'm at the end game now. There you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's kind of what I'm talking about right there. Anyway, let's actually just sell these prisoners because we are going to the town anyway. And I think that makes most, yeah, I think that makes the most sense, doesn't it? And we've actually advanced it to level 18. So let's get another point into strength and let's get some additional iron flesh. I actually wouldn't mind getting some constitution because as you can see right here, constitution does actually improve us quite significantly. It says that potion effects last longer, it reduces negative effects of intoxication, it allows us to decrease recovery time from illness and infliction, and it also allows us to recover health on the map faster, which I personally feel is probably pretty worthwhile. We don't have a huge amount in it at the moment, we only have one, so I'm thinking we're probably going to get at least... Mm, I'm going to say at least four, five, maybe even six points in it. It very much depends. We're leveling up at a pretty standard pace right now as well. My home master is a place called Putrid Lair near the frontline stronghold of Foul Peak. It is a requirement to be tough with the stronghold being on the border of what was the Wood Elf lands. Anyone who shows weakness is ridiculed and I was the worst of them. My life was hard, but in times of intense war, I was glad to be on the mountains. There is much clan molder and many rat ogres on Foul Peak, and the Wood Elves would often leave us alone and head for Mordheim. I am glad there are no Wood Elves here anymore. Well, they're actually just over the, <laughs> they're just over the, over the hills there, sir. But yes, I'm sure he is very pleased. Oh yes, by the way. I have to provide, I have to give you a huge amount of gratitude for telling me, the people that told me at least, for uh, the potion of knowledge. I'm going to show you exactly where we need to go for that after this, thanks to those in the comments that actually did tell me where to go for that, because that's going to be extremely important in just a moment. Let's just sell all of this. There we go. And I don't think I need any more food, do I? I don't think I need any more food. Let's go into the tavern real fast because there may be some, yes, there are some amazing scenes in this mod as well, as you can quite clearly tell. Look at how absolutely incredible this site is. I mean, really. The amount of work that has gone into this, and I mean, that's the thing. Not even the grand spectacle of it, because obviously it is an extremely grand spectacle. Oh! Okay. <laughs> well, that <laughs> that was not what I was intending to do. That was not what I was intending to do at all. I was thinking to myself, ah, it is a grand spectacle, and I was going to go to the edge of the um, <laughs> edge of the little uh, little standing point that I'm on right here. But I wanted to show that there are so many little details around here that I was really. <laughs> <laughs> really excited about and I was thinking yeah look at that look at how amazing this is and then I fell off yeah so anyway I'm just gonna buy all the healing potions right here and so as you can see it says plus five power strike for the duration of the effect okay I actually don't know how long that lasts um yeah for the duration of the effect because someone asked how long it lasts I don't know unfortunately I don't know, but it says become ethereal and gain maximum dodge for the, for the duration of the effect. And there is another way to increase durations of potions. If I recall correctly, there is a way to do that. So I'm going to assume that the uh, they probably last 
I'm on a break, fight your own battles. Okay, <laughs> thanks very much. Yeah, I'm going to assume that the potions last mm, uh, probably about 15 to 20 seconds. I wouldn't say that they'll last any longer than that, but I don't have any experience on that, so don't quote me on it. But I'm sure there are going to be people that know. So if you do know how long the potions last, then by all means, let the others know that, you know, that don't because I don't know either so it would be nice anyway um yeah on the art of fighting with swords I'm gonna assume that's power strike right I'm gonna take should I take wound treatment or uh hmm I don't even know what to actually take right here because all of these are gonna be very very useful but I don't even have enough money for any of them actually so I'm just gonna leave it I guess and we'll just come back at a later point and buy all the books and hopefully that's gonna be good I was actually kind of hoping that we'd be able to um, hire some of these rat ogres, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to do that. Nope, nope, there we go. The rat ogres are on a break. They are definitely on a break. Okay, do you happen to have... Uh, we're attacked by undead pirates. We'd like to track you down. Okay, track them down. Okay, sure, I can definitely try to do that. I also might be able to purchase something. Like, for example, we could get a weavery, because I do have enough money for that. And a weavery is going to get me 954 profit every single week. So we might as well do that. There you go. We might as well. That sounds like a pretty good idea. Okay, so where are the bandits? We also have to capture a lord from the night goblins. Don't, don't worry. I haven't forgotten about that quest. So track down the undead pirates who attack travelers near Putrid Stump. How long ago was that? Okay, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. So I'm, I'm going to assume that I will never find these people... The roads are full of brigands, but their name in particular does not sound familiar. Okay, well that's great, isn't it? Okay, so I don't know where they're going to go. I'm going to assume that they're probably not going to go this way, right? No, I would highly doubt that they'd go this way. Or maybe they will. There is a pirate lair over here, isn't there? Oh, there's Nurgle Devourers. Oh yes, okay, I remember these guys. Yes, I passed by them just a moment ago when I was coming this way. So, yeah, so they're very dangerous. Let's not go and attack them. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> that would be very painful. Very, very painful indeed. Okay, ooh, the Skaven have taken Quinelles from, uh, from the Kingdom of Britannia right there. That is very impressive. Ah, oh, they're so good. I, I no, no offense, but I think that the Skaven are probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Warhammer Fantasy faction, which is quite funny because, I mean, obviously I, I barely know anything about the lore or anything like that, but I just know what you what you have told me, actually, in the comments. And uh, they just seem like, you know, pretty funny, funny little, funny little guys, you know? <laughs> just funny little guys. Okay, so let's go for some more skirmishes right here. And let's actually go, just go for this. There we go. Let's get some of these guys up there as well. Just want to make sure that we've got all of them going into the battle when we want them to go in and then they're also going to get additional experience and everything okay so apparently it's going to be absolutely impossible for me to find these um these pirates which is kind of annoying but well what can i do what can i do the only thing i can do is literally just run around and see if i can find them at some point but um yeah that's one of the that's one of the major drawbacks i feel about Warband in general. That's pretty much the only drawback that I have seen most of the time is that some of the quests are very obtuse. They're extremely difficult to know where to go in certain cases and uh, oh, hello there sir. Yo ho ho he thought he could take us. Yeah you're not gonna take us sir. That is not gonna work. All right, we're just going to tell everyone to charge here, apart from our um, pistol users, of course. We want to make sure that they are staying all the way at the back. These guys actually are pretty dangerous, by the way. I don't know whether you've noticed that already, but the goblins are not pushovers in any way. They are actually quite dangerous, especially when it comes to their, um, their spider riders and their scalp takers and the war chiefs as well. All of those units are relatively powerful. They can actually do some pretty significant damage if you let them. Like, for example, you see here, we just literally lost one Poisoned Wind Globe of Deer. We, was, we lost two Scryer Gunners. But again, that's not really that big a deal, obviously. But th this, is the, this is the main thing we've got to take away from the, the fight itself. We had 
so many hills and annoying little areas and these spiders, right? The mounted spiders, they are so good at maneuverability. Their maneuverability is probably one of the greatest things you can see. And so that's the reason why they're able to just get really close to you super, super fast and then just do massive damage. And that's generally what they tend to do. Okay, so who's that? Marauding Mercs. No, we don't want to bother with those. Obviously, these um, these pirates are going to be highlighted in blue, I assume, right? There's the pirate lair. So that's the reason why I actually thought that maybe they'd be close by, you know? Maybe they'd be close by, but it doesn't seem as though that is the case. We've got some more Nurgle Devourers there. I'm not sure whether that's the same party. It might be. Oh, Night Goblins. Hello there, sir. Oh yes, I could actually um, move in to help the vermin pack and maybe... Actually, wait a minute. Let me just do a little bit of reconnaissance here. Because these guys might actually murder us. Hmm. <sighs> I'm, I'm actually wondering whether we can win this. Uh, we've got some... I mean, okay, here's the thing, yeah? These are tier 3, yeah? These are tier 3, these are tier 4, and these are tier 5. That's... That's all we've got. We've just got some tier 5. However, if this Night Goblin has more than that, then we're probably going to have some huge problems. I can already see that he has 3 Fanatics, 1 boss, 3 Wolf Rider bosses, 3 Squig Riders, and he's got some Spider Riders as well as Heavy Bashers, Wolf Riders, and all kinds of other stuff that could potentially be pretty dangerous. So let me actually just have a look. Night Goblins. All right. So yeah, Squig Riders, as you can see, are far and away very dangerous. Then you've also got these guys, which are also very dangerous. These ones, which are also kind of powerful. These guys are, are kind of powerful too. There's the Fanatics, as, as you can see. They literally have 15 in Iron Flesh, as you might expect. They have Ball and Chain. And then you've obviously got the Spider Riders as well. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say it. I think the Goblins are probably one of the strongest factions. I know, I know. That seems pretty hilarious because I'm pretty sure that's not the case. However... I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm seeing right now, and for me personally, they look really, really strong. However, if you take a look at the Hell Knights and the Vampires and so on and so forth, obviously they're going to be a lot stronger, but uh, it just depends. I don't know. Are we going to be able to achieve victory here against these guys? I mean, they literally just, uh, they literally just defeated them and then gained some, gained some prisoners. Well, that's not very good, is it? Uh, okay. What, what do you think we can do? Do you think we can actually beat this guy? That's the question. I don't know. These fellows are all fighting the Nurgle Devourers. Do we want to go in there and fight the Nurgle Devourers with them? They do have some Master Gunners and Black Rats for uh, up for grabs, which we could potentially try to... I don't even know, actually. Hmm. I am now in such a big quandary... I really want to go into battle against this guy, but I am thinking to myself we're going to lose. I feel like we're going to lose very, very easily because the enemy is just going to charge us. You know, that's the whole point. They are literally just going to charge us almost instantly. Uh, th these Nurgle Devourers are so annoying. Can they Can they just go away? Thank you. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to recruit all these guys and then... Uh, I, you know, I really wish that Erasmus had a higher trainer skill, to be honest. Because <laughs> that would really help us out a great deal, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Night Goblins... Let's go after them and see what we can do. I'll go in to fight these marauding mercs for the moment. There's the night goblin again. Oh, oh, there's another pirate press gang. Okay, let's go in for the pirate pri pirate pri blah, blah, blah. Pri pirate press gang. Thank you. If I could speak, yes, that would be nice. There we are. Okay, perfect. So, ooh, this is actually a nice battlefield. All right, I like this one. I like this one. So, basically, we're just going to go like so. Go like so. And then we'll just put them in ranks as well. Put the archers in ranks. And then we'll put the infantry out the front there. Alright, so this is obviously the very, very standard thing that we basically tend to do most of the time whenever we have some significant archers. We, you know, I've shown this particular strategy so many times over the years. And we are going to hopefully see some pretty decent... Uh, well, let's hope at least some pretty decent success in doing this. 
uh, yeah, I, I'm hopeful at least. Oh, really? Really? Come on now, Slythe. You're going to have to do better than that, sir. Yeah, I can only hope that my forces are going to do some pretty decent things here. Obviously, the enemy actually does have some pretty decent uh, ranged abilities as well, by the way. Aha, uh -huh, here's the Poison Wind Globideers. They're coming in. That's really, really nice. Oh, that's doing some massive damage. I love that. Okay, come on now. Let's take him down. Take him down. Yeah, obviously, Poisoned Wind Globideers, do bear in mind, they have um, they have uh, friendly fire. There is friendly fire uh, available with those guys. So they are literally killing our own troops, which is to be expected, I suppose. But there you go. That's just how it goes. This guy dodged. See, that's, how, that's what I'm talking about. These guys have dodge. How do you get dodge? I want to be able to get dodge. That would be so amazing. I think there is a way to get dodge, isn't there? I think so. I seem to recall that there is a way to actually get it. I think I got it with my goblin, didn't I? Didn't I get it with my goblin? I don't know. I feel like I'm remembering that from somewhere in particular. But now I can't remember where. Anyway, we did end up losing seven troops, but that's not really that big a deal. As I said before, you know, if we end up losing a couple of troops, that really does not matter to me at all. Even if we lose our entire army, that doesn't matter to me either. Because you can get it back super, super easily. And then you're just gonna, you know, do the standard thing. Do you know, do the standard thing. Just fight some bandits and do do all that wonderful stuff. Okay, so now I'm hopeful that after this, we might have the ability to go in against the Night Goblin army there because we will have hopefully leveled up some of our other troops. Because as you can see, we've got some Warblock engineers. Obviously, now here's the funny thing. Back in the day when I did Slythe's original series, I remember a hundred percent that I would very specifically not level up any of my Poisoned Wind Globideers because I wanted to keep as many of them as possible in comparison to the Warplock Engineers. Now, nowadays, um, I'm a little bit in two minds about that strategy because apart from the fact that Poisoned Wind Globideers are obviously amazing in dealing AoE damage, the Warplock Engineers are a thousand times better in doing long-ranged damage. Poisoned Wind Globideers obviously are amazing for AoE, but not so much for single target. So that's the reason. Anyway, I'm actually... Oh, I don't have enough money. Yes. Oh, dear. Yes, I do not have enough money. Well, that is a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Poison continues to take its toll on these guys. Well, that's not very nice, is it? Oh, well, we can't really do much about that. All right, so I decided that I'd go off screen for a little bit of time because obviously if I don't have any money to actually upgrade my forces, well, then there's not really any point in that, right? So I basically went and I fought a, um, well, <laughs> basically this is a bit, of a, a bit of a cheap strategy, but I saw a pirate press gang and they were being attacked by some Skaven. And I was like, okay, I'll just go in there. And I went in there and I got a bunch of prisoners. And among those prisoners was actually a Bretonian Grail Knight. And obviously, as you know, they're pretty high tier. And as a result, we're getting a lot of money for it. So there you go. We got a, a, at least 800 gold for that, which is actually pretty good. And then we do have this Brigandine as well, which I can obviously sell. So we've got 1500 gold now, which is going to obviously enable me to level up some more of our troops, even though... We don't actually have that many of them to level up anyway, because I've obviously been doing that for quite some time now. So, uh, yeah, I also did gain a Storm Vermin and a Black Rat, among other things, to add to our ranks. So I'm pretty happy with that too. And otherwise, we can now take an action, because what we want to do, obviously, is we want to drink a potion or use an item. So we can now drink a potion of knowledge. You drunk a potion, you drunk a potion, you drunk a potion, you drunk a potion, and there you go. There's a thousand knowledge every single time you take one of those potions. And now we've gotten to 21 strength, which is absolutely fantastic for me. I'm going to be going for another point in Iron Flesh, actually. And we're going to go for some more thrown weapon skill, I suppose. Maybe I'd put a couple in, in pole arms as well. And then we can move on. And there you go. All right, so we've got 21 now in strength and i'm very much hoping yes there we go there's our wages so you can finally see what our wages are like now as well so you can see here that well basically every single place is giving us exceptional cash and bear in mind that every single one of these workshops or shall we say enterprises is completely different from each other so we are trying to maximize our 
profitability as much as we can here. And I'm actually going to go and see if I can complete the, uh, well, the, 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 the one quest that we wanted to do. You know, capturing the Night Goblin Lord. It's going to be a bit difficult. Here's the Bretonian Caravan again, by the way. As you can see, they have six questing knights, three or gray knight, grail knights, one paladin. <laughs> I don't think I'd actually be able to deal with them. I still don't think so. All right, so instead of attempting to find a Night Goblin Lord, I decided to go into the dungeon in the Night Goblin territory instead. And I've already gotten hit massively by some dwarven whatever it was. I'm not, I'm not actually entirely sure what I got hit by. I think it is a crossbow. I think they're pretty good with crossbows or something. So yeah, hopefully I'm not going to take any more damage, <laughs> he says as he gets hit by the axe. Yeah, that's great. But that's the point. We do have a health potion. We have quite a few health potions right now, so I shouldn't shouldn't really. Uh, you know what? Maybe I should just take it. We're, we're still on difficulty three, by the way, so I'm just going to take it right now, just to make sure that we don't get one shot, because there are those. There, there is a possibility of that, of course. Can I actually? Are you serious? Are you serious that you just shot me? I am not a big fan of that. I gotta say. I'm not a big fan of that. Alright, it seems like we still are not killing enemies in one hit, so it seems like I might still have to prioritize Power Strike a little bit more than I possibly would have liked. Uh, it seems like there is an invisible wall here, so I won't be able to go that way. However, I'm pretty sure... Hmm. I'm actually wondering, where do you think the chest is? Uh, do I care? Yeah, kind of. I, I kind of do care, but I'm also kind of thinking, why am I... Why, why are we why are we all the way in the air here? This is a bit of a weird one. This is a bit of a weird level, I gotta say. Bit of a weird level, but uh, <laughs> I guess there are gonna be some of those sometimes. Actually, wait a minute. Is the chest down there? I hope not. No. Okay, yeah, no, it's not. Of course not. Okay. Yeah, well, whatever the case, I'm pretty sure I just have to go over there to exit. So that's what we're gonna do in just a moment. I'm just gonna have a look. Around here? No, that doesn't seem to be anything. All right. Well, I, that's the thing. I, I still am not entirely convinced that I really want to find the chests every single time. But if they're um, possibly easily accessible, then I don't really see the problem with uh, looking around a little bit. But obviously that could be kind of annoying. I don't know. Aha, it's this one. Oh, yes, I know this level. Okay, Ah, more dwarves. Okay. Yeah, we are technically in Dwarven territory a little bit. We're close to Dwarven territory, but, you know, we're not actually at war against them or anything like that. However, we are at war against the Wood Elves now, because uh, the Skaven actually did declare war against them. And, yeah, these guys are super nice and easy for us to defeat. Okay, I'm going to tell them to follow me now. Basics. The basics of Warband that I've forgotten. Yes, because I am uh, I am 82, actually. I am actually 82 years old, so you do have to, you know, bear in mind. Actually, no, wait, 182. So that's the reason why my memory has failed me. Yes. <laughs> my memory has failed me long, long ago. My memory failed me. And so much so that I have forgotten everything that Erasmus taught me. Okay, let's not get shot in the face while I'm being funny here. There we go. <laughs> That's wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. You know what? I'm actually going to tell Erasmus to charge because I feel like he could be a lot better just charging right here because if he doesn't charge, I'm going to get shot by this, by this gun and I'd much prefer not to get shot myself and I'd rather have him get shot if you know what I mean. I, I'd much prefer that. Wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, I would prefer that, probably. Okay, I'm just going to have a quick look around here because I don't... Oh, wow, he literally got killed? Really? I'm actually really surprised that he got killed there, to be honest. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, is that is that a chest that I can interact with? Nope. Yeah, uh, uh, it's under here. It's under here. There it is. Yep. Nice. Okay. Ooh, not bad. Not bad. Arabian armor right there. It sells for 3600 or technically the base value of the armor is 3600 So it's not going to sell for that much, of course. But, you know, it's going to be decent. Oh, uh, yeah. By the way, this is a medium, uh, medium length um, medium length dungeon. So we're not going to be fighting four levels. It's probably going to be eight. 
eight levels, I'm going to assume, something like that. And I'm a bit worried about that, to be honest, because if we have to fight eight levels and we have to fight so many ranged enemies, because obviously, as you can see right here, I'm facing ranged enemies almost every single time now, and I don't have a shield. So it's very, very difficult for us to actually survive here without taking chip damage. There's so much. Oh, there we go. Uh, I've also been inflicted with venom. Well, that's not very nice. Okay, let me heal myself, can I? Oh, what? I just took two healing potions and it literally healed me for nothing. As you can see right there. It's because I have been poisoned, I assume. Okay, can I kill this? No. Okay, apparently I need a ranged weapon to kill this guy. Nice. There we go. Take him down. And uh, yeah, now now we're in now we're in some some big problems. Now we are in some big problems here. Okay, what what is that? What is that right there? Okay, so am I st do I still have venom on me? No. Okay, so venom only lasts until the end of the dungeon, and that reduces our healing done by a significant amount, as you can see right there. So that's that's another thing that we've got to learn. You know, it's all about the knowledge. It's all about knowledge. It's all about being able to know these little intricacies that we wouldn't have otherwise known because let's face it you know this is the first time that i'm actually coming into contact with these kinds of mechanics so there's no real way for me to know that kind of stuff there's a chest right behind that door there okay let's be a little bit careful here there we go nice nice these guys have no idea what they're doing there we go that's wonderful do you want to come in here do you want to come in here sir oh how did you hit me like that sir wow you are skilled all right let's um Get the chest if I can. There we go. All right. Uh, we got a... Oh, okay. Mm, yeah, most of this stuff, not so good, but it's all right. You know, it's fine. Oh, no. Well, this is not going to go well, is it? Maybe it is. Uh, I mean, the funny thing is, I actually have pretty significant damage. This this goblin has done more damage to me than every single dwarf in this entire dungeon so far. What a crazy, crazy guy. Oh well, at least we found the chest, so I don't actually need to, uh, you know, be too concerned about that. So we can go through to the next one. Okay, Dungeon Room 5. So basically I have another three levels, I think. Oh yeah, these guys are going to kill me, I'm pretty sure. Am I? Am I going to die from them? Maybe. It depends. It depends whether they have the ability to shoot me and kill me instantly. That's the problem. Because they are obviously in possession of pistols. Ah, oh, gonna have to heal myself here. This is bad. Okay, yeah, that that you know what you know what actually did the business on us? That venom, right? That venom where I was like, oh, I want to heal myself. I want to heal myself, and then I used two potions, thinking to myself, yeah, I really need to get my healing because I thought I hadn't pressed it. You see, I actually thought I hadn't pressed it accurately enough. And because I was looking at my HP, and there's damage. Yep. There's some significant damage coming in. And this is indeed a very dangerous enemy. He dodged. Uh, that was a master gunner right there that did 38 damage against us. That is an insane amount. Okay, I feel like I should probably look around for the chest, even though I'm... You know, no offense, but... Oh, there we go. I think I am probably going to die. Um, oh, reinforced skeleton shield. That's actually not bad. 3,100 base value. That's all right. I'm not. I'm not gonna think that that's gonna sell for that much. What? Exit dungeon? We did it. We did it. Okay. Hello there. We've got the staff of Shapesh, a Falangan long rifle, a bunch of uh, an orcish. Oh wow, this is great for Oggy Boggy. This is absolutely fantastic for Oggy Boggy. All right. Yeah. Hello there. Yeah, yeah, give me all this. There you go. So I actually did win the dungeon, hilariously enough. I thought to myself, I'm never going to survive this, but apparently we did. There you go. You know, you know what actually did this? You know what actually allowed me to achieve victory there? It's because I remembered the basics of Warband. That was it. I remembered the basics of Warband. That was exactly the reason. That was exactly why I achieve victory. Obviously, I'm being funny, but... <laughs> anyway, I actually would love Oggy Boggy to wear this, but unfortunately, he doesn't have the ability to do so. Can he wear the shield? He can actually use the shield. All right. I actually would like... You know what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this Orc shield better for him? I mean, it's, it's, it, it's the same size, but it doesn't look like the same size, as you can quite clearly tell. 
So I guess I'm just gonna leave him with the orc chopper. The orc chopper, eh? The orc chopper. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the problem about the orc chopper. It it is um very bad. Let's just say that. It is really bad. I would love for him to wear this helmet, but unfortunately he's not going to be able to because he needs 11 strength. He needs 11 strength and he only has 7. Yeah, poor guy. He's weak. Oh, that's so sad. Anyway, there we go. We were able to do that. So now all I need to do... Well, I say all I need to do, but it's actually a bit... It's actually a bit difficult, but yes, all I need to do now is capture one of these night goblins and then we'll be good. Oh, oh, hello. Wait a minute. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, wait a minute. Hello. Do you see that right there? Do you see that enemy right there? We want to fight that guy. We want to fight the guy with 47. That's who we want to fight. If we can get him into a battle, we should be pretty good. Boss Hurt Butts. Yes, that is the fellow that we want to fight. Even though he has some squig riders and all that wonderful stuff, he is the one that we want to fight if we can. Uh, I really, really want to get into a battle with these guys. I mean, not all of these guys, of course, but I want to get into a battle with one of them, at least. Maybe there's someone else around here somewhere that we can actually fight, and there's just one of them or something? I mean, it's highly unlikely that that's going to happen, but we might get the opportunity. There's a goblin warband there. That's really not going to help me out at all. Um, just got to be a bit careful as well, because I don't really want to get ambushed. Uh, I don't see anyone right here. Obviously, this is the thing. I actually have really, really bad spotting skill as well. Oh, hello. Are you serious? Oh. Uh. Hmm. I actually don't know whether we'll be able to achieve victory here, but this is a fat... What? What is this? What is this battlefield? What is this battlefield right here? This is an amazing battlefield for us. Okay, I feel like they're probably going to lose... Just purely because they are, um, well, I mean, if we can, if we can actually get into position relatively quickly, which, as you can quite clearly tell, is difficult to do, considering the enemy actually has some very, very good troops right here. These spiders are able to get through enemy lines really fast as well, by the way. Don't know whether you noticed that, or whether uh, that was obvious enough, but they're able to very easily just penetrate enemy lines, and you're going to have no issues whatsoever with that. And then I, I've used these guys before, by the way, um, if you don't know. I have actually played as a goblin and played with all of these all of these troops before, and they are exceptional. They're very, very good at what they do because they will literally just do exactly this. They will just go into enemy lines. They have enough HP to be able to survive for a significant amount of time, and they're going to be difficult. They're going to be difficult to dislodge. They will literally just stand in your archer lines and just murder. They will just murder everything. I'm going to just tell these guys to move back. I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge in. Because obviously we do have one cavalry. Let's try and take out this this um, spider. Oh no, that's not going to happen. All the braves and stuff are getting in the way. That's kind of annoying, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to have to get these guys out of the way a little bit. Oh no, he's dead. Okay, never mind. Okay. I think he died at least. I think the spider rider died. I mean, basically, that's what we want to try to focus down. If we can... That's what you want to try to focus down against goblins, because obviously the the main <laughs> the main uh, shall we say meat of the army aren't actually the uh, scouts or the braves or any of these lower tier you know infantry slash archers. None of those guys are actually going to be doing too much at all. And if you're just going to be fighting those, you really do not have to worry one bit. However, if they have a lot of squig riders or a lot of spider riders or even a lot of scalp takers, the scalp takers are actually pretty decent. Um, they, you know, they're not too bad. They're, they're just like, you know, your standard infantry with a shield. And sometimes they can actually do some pretty decent damage. However, if they have a lot of those rider type units, they will just... They will just get on top of you really fast, and you won't even know what's happened. It will just be extremely quick. Anyway, there you go. We did actually get 9 Renown for that. I'm kind of surprised that we actually were able to achieve victory here. Um, but there you go. We got some giant spiders, and we got a hardened night goblin armored robe. Pretty nice. I'm actually not entirely sure what to do with this. Because the Staff of Shapesh requires a person with mana, and we don't have anyone that can use magic right now. So this is basically pointless. The Phalanquin Long Rifle, I technically could use this. So I might as well do that, right? I might as well do that. I, I don't know how effective this is really going to be for me. 
um, because I was actually going to buy a regular Giselle rifle because that's kind of what I was, um, well, that's basically what I was planning on using. Um, but who knows? Okay, may maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's not. Anyway, we're not going to go for any more Poisoned Wind Globe Deers. We are now going to start diversifying and going for some more Master Gunners because Master Gunners will become Scryer Giselles. And obviously, as you may or may not know, they kind of have a similar effect to the Warplock Engineers, even though the Engineers are using pistols. So these guys use pistols, whereas the Scryer Giselles, they obviously use the long range, uh, kind of like sniper ish kind of weapon. And they're going to do massive damage with single targets. So they're more, they're more about taking down singular targets like cavalry and harder units like rat ogres and, you know, the bigger ones, the bigger units. That's basically what you're, uh, what you're going to get out of those guys. Anyway, I actually did level up once again. So I'm going to be going for more strength. And then we're going to, we're going to slap a point into constitution here because I personally feel like that is going to be a really nice thing to do. Uh, because constitution, that's going to help us to regain HP super, super quickly. And I'm actually kind of wondering where the goblins have gone. Are they actually in a... Are they actually fighting the undead right now? Are they actually fighting the skeletons? Because I don't know whether that is indeed the case. Oh yeah, as I was saying, I actually wouldn't mind getting... Um, let me let me go in here, actually. I'm, I'm neutral with these guys, so <laughs> I might as well, right? I might as well. Okay, so let's actually just sell all of this. Reinforce this, reinforce that, sell this, yes, look at this, look at this, it's actually significant cash right here, really, really nice cash, we'll sell the giant spiders as well, I'm not going to be using those, and uh, we've got 4,200, okay, that's really nice, and we'll sell the wizard's head piece as well, um, yeah, we'll buy some bread just in case, and then we can go into the tavern here, do I have any prisoners? No, I don't have any prisoners right now. And we've got some undead here if we want to take them, but I will not at the moment, at least. And yeah, well, now we just basically have to figure out where the goblins are. I'm going to assume that they're probably going to be, hmm, let me actually just have a look. Faction relations. We can take a look and see where they actually are and who they're at war against. They are indeed at war against the Tomb Kings, like we, like we suspected. So that means that I should probably take a look at some of the areas around here because these villages are being looted, as you can see. I'm kind of wondering whether they're going to be, um, you know, besieging something in the area because if they do, the Tomb Kings are going to come down on them hard and we might be able to pick off one of the vassals, which would be really nice. Uh, it's not looking particularly good for me right now, is it? Um, let me just go a bit closer here. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Hello, hello. Okay. We've got two enemies in here that could potentially be a good target. I've got to be very careful about the Night Goblin Patrol, though. Because these Night Goblin Patrols, they actually move relatively fast. They're moving not as fast as us, of course, but they are going to move quite fast. I'm hunting a group of bandits. <laughs> I'm hunting a group of bandits. Would you happen to know where they are? Our mortal nemeses. Yes, our mortal nemeses, the goblins. Yes, they're, they're going to tell us exactly where to find those pirates. Indeed. Anyway, I am basically just going to be... Uh, I, I don't actually think we're going to have any issues here. But I can almost guarantee you, if we are unable to kill these spiders before they reach our lines, we are inherently going to take damage. And it doesn't matter what. You're, you're just going to... You're going to take damage no matter what. This guy could be doing so much more damage if he didn't have his bow out, which is actually quite funny. Not entirely sure why he's randomly using his bow, but that was the entire reason why he wasn't actually doing anything right there. If he'd actually done something else, like actually used his proper weapon, like his, his melee weapon, he would have gotten at least two kills. Pretty sure. Pretty sure, because those guys are actually really, really good at what they do. Obviously, as I've said, I know from first-hand experience that they are good. Um, otherwise, yeah, we are, uh, I think, pretty good here as well. Obviously, this is literally just a regular, regular patrol. But hopefully, if we can eliminate this, this actually gives us an overall advantage in the future. Because this is going to make it so that this patrol doesn't actually go after us in a moment of weakness. Because we do not want to be in a position where this patrol gangs up on me and then that 187 strong army is nearby and then murders us at the same time. 
That's really what I want to try to avoid. All right, so let me see here. Can I just wait here for some time and let, let's actually see whether this... Uh, gotta be a little bit careful. Uh, we got Chaos Lord Slavers there. I'm kind of hoping that one of these guys is going to leave. I want the lower, uh, lower strength guys to leave. That would be extremely useful for us. If we could actually make that happen. It seems like it isn't. You, ooh, hello. You notice a smashed goods caravan by the side of a pathway. Do you investigate? Investigate the caravan. Oh, okay. We got some, uh, we got some food right here. All right, I'll take it. You see some tracks suggesting an ambush, but there are no dead guards or horses to be seen. Whoever did it must be a long way away by now. All right, well, there you go. Okay, well, that's, that's not too bad. That was a pretty, pretty easy event for us to complete. And I'm still wondering where those goblins actually are, because uh, I would have expected them to be relatively close by, considering, but it seems like these fellows are not wanting to leave that particular that particular castle, which is uh, super annoying, actually, because I would like to get my hands on at least one of those. Pretty sure they're going to be a bit, bit of a difficult one, to be honest. I think they're probably going to be quite difficult. Ah, Boss Grotsnag was just eliminated. I don't know where he is. That's the problem. I have no idea where he is because, you know, if I did, I'd go straight there and try and see if I could intercept a couple more goblins, but it doesn't seem as though I'm actually going to be able to find anyone in the desert for some reason. I don't know why. They seem very, very difficult to track down. And maybe, just maybe, maybe they've, maybe they've left. Maybe some people are around here. No, they, they are still, they're stuck in there, basically. They're just, they're just chilling. They're just chilling. And I think that's probably going to be it for this episode, actually. I'm going to get carried away otherwise. And uh, I, I still have 11 days, so it isn't out of the realm of possibility that I would be able to achieve this quest. And I'd very much like to be able to do it. And uh, yeah, Slythe is looking pretty powerful right now. He's looking pretty good. And also, as you no doubt saw, I actually did use the long rifle a little bit in that previous battle, the small little battle against the patrol. And uh, it actually reloads really fast. Kind of surprised about that. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and for all of your support on this series so far. And I'll see you next time.